dominion. We are vulnerable to humankind. And we are vulnerable to the decisions of humans. When it registers, when we're most cognizant that we are a vulnerable people, it is as if we hear the voice of God say, Welcome to my world. The world created by God is one where even God is vulnerable. Remembrance of the incarnation of Christ makes it painfully clear that even God is vulnerable. Welcome to my world, says God. God knows what it is to experience suffering in the world. Placing God's self in the midst of humankind, God comes to us as the divine human one. Fully human, fully divine, Jesus is vulnerable to the humans who determine his fate. He does not go through life unencumbered by the religious and political forces that seek to do him in. Jesus does not shy away from the people who plot to remove him from the scene. Jesus immerses himself in the land in which he lives. He reaches out to those in need. He makes himself available to any and all who will receive his preaching, his teaching, and his healing. He allows himself to be accepted, and he submits himself to the possibility of rejection. Jesus is vulnerable to humankind. Such is the world God brings us into. Such is the world God has created. A world of vulnerability. God refuses to be an invincible presence on earth. God makes God's self vulnerable. Jesus is not spared from death on the cross. God allows humankind to exercise the choice of an execution that is politically and religiously motivated. And if God does not spare God's self in Christ from suffering and death, we may reason that we shall not be spared either. We are a vulnerable people. Welcome to my world, says God. Yet the world in which God is vulnerable is also the world in which God is redemptive. When Mary and the other women go to the tomb, to the body of Christ, they do so in the fullness of the, their humanity to give the beloved Lord dignity after his death. They carry the oil and the spices. Unable to protect Jesus in life, they will honor him in death. But much to their surprise, they learn that they are not alone in their efforts to redress a horrible calamity. God beats the women to the grave. God arrives first. God raises Jesus from the dead. God is the one who created life from a formless void and darkness. God reigns supreme over all. And the folly of earthlings shall not thwart God's design. And God demonstrates that even in the midst of devastation and death, there is redemption and salvation. God lifts Jesus. To a new day. God demonstrates that even in the midst of devastation and death, God is salvific. And we see it amongst humankind. When houses are crushed by tornadoes, there are neighbors to take in those who are displaced. When there are scorched patches of land, Salvation Army and Red Cross workers are at the ready to offer water 
When there are earthquakes that fell buildings, there are humans above the ground, clawing through the dirt to pull life through the rubble. And when there are flooded regions, there are people who commandeer watercrafts and helicopters in hopes of lifting survivors to dry and higher ground. Human efforts are not efficient. Human life is lost when there are flawed rescues. And human life, human efforts are not sufficient. Human life is lost because of overwhelming forces of nature. But human efforts are not futile. To be vulnerable is to be alive. And if we are not vulnerable, we are dead. God's world is one where the living are forever in tension with the possibility of death. And God's world is one where even when death is encountered, redemption is at the ready by God. Dominion is shared with humankind, yet God reigns supreme. And to this creation, God says, welcome to my world. Amen.
Friends, we gather at a feast that has been prepared for us by our risen Lord. People will gather from north and south and east and west to sit at this table of salvation. May the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal and triune God, whom we worship as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ, you spoke the word that brought the whole world into being. And by the Holy Spirit, you brought order out of chaos and breathed life into your creatures. In parental love, you stood by us in spite of our disobedience, correcting us with gracious reproof and welcoming us again into your loving embrace. And therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Born of Mary, he came to dwell among us, full of grace and truth. And to all who believed, he gave power to become your children. In ministry among your own, Jesus cared for all, forgiving their failures, healing their hurts, and nurturing their faith, giving himself an utter sacrifice for those he loved. He inspired ordinary folk to spirit-filled living, and Jesus displayed in his life, death, and rising again the power of your spirit. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine, and we joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. And with thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. And by your Spirit make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place, and as this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. We offer these prayers in the one your Son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, on the evening of his arrest, Jesus gathered with those who loved him. And on that occasion, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which shall be broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant, sealed with my blood. As long as you eat the bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of our Lord until he comes again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us enjoy the feast. 
Has everyone received the elements? Or any of the Then friends, I invite you to take the bread, and this is the body of Christ, and it is the bread of heaven. And this is the cup of our salvation, which makes us whole. We participate in this feast with reverence. It is a holy practice. And now let us sing together of God's holiness.